call this meeting of the Oskaloosa City Council to order. Uh, today is Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. We start with the invocation by Pastor Molly Goodrich, First Christian Church. Let us pray. God, thank you for the men and women who have gathered in this space and around the community. They've given up their time and offered their talents and insights to help Oskaloosa be as healthy and productive as it can be. In this room, there are many opinions, many options, many details to talk through and consider. We ask you be the center and motivation of all that processing of thoughts. We ask that you be in the center of all the words shared and the center of all the decisions made. In this room, leaders are chosen, celebrated and welcomed into the community. Thank you for all of their determination. Thank you for their sacrifices and thank you for all the commitments made tonight and in the many nights to come. Bring mercy upon those who are tired and weary. Bring peace to those who are struggling and overthinking. Bring joy to those who light up the dark corners. God, for all that happens and doesn't happen in this place, we pray to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. Pastor. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Burnett? Here. Calgary? Here. Drust? Here. Moore? Here. Hudson? Here. Wallen? Here. Steve? Here. Okay. Next item up is the opportunity for community comments. Uh, this item is reserved to receive comments from the community for concerns whether or not they're included on the current agenda. The community is encouraged to speak before the mayor and city council, asked to keep statements brief, uh, time limited to no more than three minutes. Any questions are to be asked to the city staff, the council members, or the mayor prior to speaking to the full council. So that way concerns can be properly researched and answered away from the meeting. Comments are to be directed to the mayor and city council only. Is there anyone who would like to speak tonight? Okay. She has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seeing none, we'll move on with the agenda. Next item up is the opportunity to swear in uh, Oskaloosa Police Officer Stephen Stangle. Uh, Stephen had, was raised in Ida Grove, Iowa, where he graduated from OABCIG High School. He is married to Leah Stangle, and they are expecting their first baby girl at the end of October. After high school, Stephen enlisted with the United States Marine Corps and served for four years as a military police officer before being honorably discharged this last June. During his time serving as a military police, uh, Stephen developed a passion for law enforcement and a desire to continue his career of law enforcement outside the military. Officer Stangle served one year in Camp Fuji, Japan, before completing his service at Camp Pendleton, California. Officer Stangle and his wife decided to come to Oskaloosa because they wanted a good community to grow in and raise their family. Officer Stangle enjoys target shooting, reading, exploring nature, and playing go board games with his wife. Um, Officer Stangle, would you please come forward? <clears throat> you return to facing. You raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I, Stephen Stangle, do solemnly swear. I, Stephen Sangle, do solemnly swear that I will support and comply with, I will support and comply with the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution and laws of the State of Iowa, the Constitution and laws of the State of Iowa, the Charter Laws and Ordinances of the City of Oskaloosa, the Charter Laws and Ordinances of the City of Oskaloosa, the Rules and Regulations of the Oskaloosa Police Department, the Rules and Regulations of the Oskaloosa Police Department, the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics, the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics, and I will faithfully and impartially, I will faithfully and impartially, discharge the duties of my position, discharge the duties of my position, as police officer to the best of my ability, as police officer to the best of my ability. Welcome aboard.
Stephen, thank you for your military service too. I wouldn't even show up. <laughs> Unless I was a police officer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, officer. Right. Got one more to go. I heard two. Yeah, she's still time, don't they? Yeah. Huh? I heard three? Two more. Well, Andy. One more after that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next item up is the consent agenda. These are all items that are considered to be routine in nature. I did want to draw uh, Council's attention to a couple of things and also pull a couple of items off. Uh, first off is item H, which is the appointment of uh, representative to the Planning and Zoning Commission, Andrew Gemmel. Uh, also a motion appointing uh, representative to the Stephen Memorial Animal Shelter, John Otteson. Uh, that is item I. And then, uh, let's see, item O is uh, Resolution scheduling a public hearing on the vacation and sale of the north, south, east, west alleys adjacent to 907 D Avenue West. Uh, that is on September 20th of 2021. You said item O? No, it's P. Oh, okay. What? Oh. That's P. P. Oh. Okay. 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 And then, uh, hmm, so it is. Okay. <laughs> and then finally. Yep, that's it for the things I wanted to draw to attention. Uh, we also uh, have been uh, need to pull off item E, uh, having to do with the pay application uh, for the Iowa Bridge and Culvert LC. Uh, the, uh, the dollar amount as written needs to be corrected. And then also pulling off... Item O, Mayor. Item O, okay. And this one has to do with... It's actually on the screen here. It's going to be more up to date than the printed copy you have okay. in the book. So that's, so that's going to be the, into. the resolution approving an amendment to the Oskaloosa Employee Handbook. Yep, the Employee Handbook. That uh, it only has to do with um, uh, bereavement leave, but it is something that we're wanting to change the effective date. So I'd um, like to ask that the effective date be September 1st instead of tonight. Mm -hmm. So, so. So anyway, what I'd like is a motion of approval for the consent agenda with the removal of the two items. So moved. Second. Okay. okay. But is that going to still happen by September 1st, Michael? I know well, you're wanting to get that. Done. And I'm wanting to pull that out and, and vote on that separately. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussion on the consent agenda? Roll call, please. Ernest? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Dross? Yes. Moore? Yes. Odyssey? Yes. Wally? Yes. Yay? Yes. Okay, thank you. That passes. Now, item E, that is the uh, approval of the pay application uh, for uh, Iowa Bridge and Culvert LC. Uh, the uh, correct amount should be $58,014.59. Uh, and so, do we have a motion of approval for that? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Dross? Yes. Moore? Yes. Audison? Yes. Wally? Yes. Gates? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Okay. So that passes. And then uh, the last one had to do with the amendment to the Oskaloosa Employee Handbook, uh, where it talks about bereavement. Um, you know, the desire is to uh, make that effective the 1st of September instead of at the time of this passage. And so, do you have a motion of support? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Roll call, please. Dross? Yes. Moore? Yes. Audison? Yes. Wally? Yes. Gates? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Calgary? Yes. Okay, that passes. Gets us into the uh, regular agenda. First up is the announcement of vacancies. Uh, we have on the Airport Commission one vacancy, term ending in December of 2021. The Board of Adjustment. And there are two vacancies for terms beginning in January of 2022. The Building Code Board of Appeals, we have one vacancy for a regular member and one for an ex-officio member. Historic Preservation Commission, there's one vacancy for a regular member 
uh, for a term ending in December of 2022, two vacancies for regular members beginning January of 2022, and two vacancies for alternate members for terms ending December 2021 and December 2023. Our library board has one vacancy for a term ending of June 2023. The Mahaska Solid Waste Management Commission, we have four vacancies for a term that begins on January of 2022. Uh, Municipal Housing Agency, there are two vacancies for terms ending February of 2023. And the Planning and Zoning Commission, there's one vacancy for a term ending in April of 2024. So, now getting into the regular agenda, uh, first up is a uh, public hearing uh, rezoning uh, property located at 703 South Market Street from UC Mixed Use Urban Corridor District and R2 Urban Family Residential District to UC Mixed Use to Urban Corridor District. Uh, this is the first reading and it does require a public hearing. So we have Confe Confederated Builders uh, who is the applicant along with Marjorie Cunningham who is the owner who have submitted an application to rezone the property. The property is vacant. It measures approximately 120 foot by 300 foot. It's split zoned with an R2 zoning over roughly the southern two thirds and UC zoning over the northern two thirds. The property recently received site plan approval for a Pizza Hut restaurant. And other findings for the proposed rezoning include first that uh, the split UC and R2 zoning on the property follows no identifiable boundary and complicates site development due to varying district regulations. Number two, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan. The site is located in a neighborhood service node and the plan recommends mixed use land use on the South Market Street corridor. Three, the rezoning is consistent with the existing land use pattern and would not result in any business encroachment into the neighborhood. Fourth, the change would not severely impact traffic, public facilities, natural characteristics, or change the population density, population density and finally, the change would not constitute spot zoning, which would be singling out a zoning change for the sole benefit of the owner and contrary to the comprehensive plan. On the August 3rd meeting, Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing and voted to unanimously recommend approval to the City Council. Staff also concurs with the recommendation. So I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion of support for this first reading of the planning zone? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Moore? Yes. Bodison? Yes. Walling? Yes. Gates? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Calendary? Yes. Ross? Yes. Okay. That passes. Next item B, this is to consider regulation resolution authorizing execution of a lease and maintenance agreement for copying machines. Uh, so uh, we have a proposed lease and maintenance agreement with access systems for copy machines, 60 months for $388.95 a month, built quarterly. So it will be $1,166.85 at a time. The agreement is to provide the two sharp copiers and retain the current purchase sharp machine. The new copiers will be placed in City Hall, the current sharp machine will be deployed to another department and the Xerox machine will be disposed of through the surplus property disposal process. And so um, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Is there anyone who wants to speak to this? I'll close the public hearing. Any comments from, excuse me, do we have a motion of support from council? So moved. Second. Any comments from council? Just. Why are we getting this? I mean, this seems like something, Michael, you and your staff can make a decision on. And I don't care if we're voting on it, but I just don't know. I'd trust you for something like this. <laughs> Appreciate that, uh, Council Member. The state statutes require us to hold a public hearing for leases because it creates a debt for the city. And so we have to go this route, unfortunately. And that's a, is that's that rental? always a rule. State code? No, is that a rental? Does Lease. It, Police, it, yeah, police. Yeah. Wow. Even <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is even in larger cities, you'll see this show up on their agenda. It's yeah, and, just the way it, is. and it requires a hearing. You can't consent agenda something like this. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Great. I'm going to make them double pot. Roll call, please. Yes. Warren? Yes. 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 Okay, that passes. Getting us to that. Next up is a motion approving a short-term operating agreement with Mahaska County YMCA and the City of Oskaloosa. On March 16 of 2021, the City Council approved a letter of intent designated Mahaska County YMCA as the operator of the new Childhood Education and Recreation Center facility on behalf of the City of Oskaloosa. Since that time, construction of the facility has commenced and the early childhood education portion of the project is nearing completion. As a result, a temporary or long or short-term operating agreement is necessary. Parties are expected to enter a long-term agreement no later than January 1 of 2022 at this point. Attached to this item is a draft of the uh, short-term operating agreement between the parties that's been conceptually agreed upon by the respective city and YMCA committees assigned to work on it. Uh, highlights, first off, it's four months or until a long-term agreement is executed. Uh, the YMCA may use the facility consistent and compliant with its current 501c3 charitable organizational status. The YMCA is responsible for operating and maintaining the facility on the city's behalf and in concert with the Oskaloosa Community School District. YMCA is responsible for the maintenance, repair, and replacement of all furniture, fixtures, and equipment that's used in the facility. All such items remain with the facility in the event of a termination of the agreement. Classroom space and use is consistent with the previously agreed upon shared use agreement with the city and district. Costs associated with operating and maintaining the facility is responsibility of the YMCA, although it does exclude certain items like the roof, structural items, uh, foundation, HVAC. Uh, the city will remove snow from the parking lot. It will sweep, crack, seal, and patch the parking lots. It does restate the advisory committee role, duties, and powers. And then it also, uh, the termination of the agreement can be mutual or by breach without a cure. So staff has recommended approval of the item, directing the mayor to execute a short-term operating agreement that is substantive, substantively <laughs> similar to the attached draft document, uh, pending any edits, any edits and revisions by the parties and legal counsel. Uh, so I believe the YMCA has already approved it. Do we have a motion of support for this? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? We've spent a lot of time talking about this from time to time. So. Well, I kind of have one little question. It's really peanuts, really. So I see the city's responsible for repair and maintenance of the exterior of the building. So that building has a lot of windows on it. On the outside, is the wife responsible for housekeeping on those windows? In other words, cleaning them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Walling? Yes. Dave? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Algeri? Yes. Joss? Yes. Moore? Yes. Audison? Yes. Okay. That passes. Gets us to the end of the regular part of the uh, agenda. Uh, now there's an opportunity to receive reports from uh, Mayor and City Council as far as Anything going on with updates on activities, events, that sort of thing. But first, why don't we start with anything new from the city manager? No, sir. Okay. City clerk, anything? No, sir. Thank you. City attorney? No, thank you, sir. Okay. How about you, Steve? Anything? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Tom? Um, EMA has a meeting coming up at the end of the month. I've forgotten the date. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say, our prayers and thoughts go out to Matt. Seville and his grandchild, the death of his grandchild, and, and the Bentley's family. Um, we wish him the best. And I want to say it's good to see Marion here. Yeah. <laughs> That's yep. it. Nothing for them. Okay. Scotty? No. Nope. 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 Thank okay. you. And I have nothing to add as well. Uh, so uh, moving on, uh, there's an opportunity to hold a closed session under Iowa Code section. 21.5.1.J uh, to discuss the purchase of particular real estate uh, only where premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price that the governmental body would have to pay for that property. Uh, do we have a motion of support to go into closed session? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yay. Yes. Burnett? 
Yes. Pellinger? Yes. Dross? Yes. Moore? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Wally? Yes. Okay, that passes. Yeah, we will dismiss the public at this time and go into closing. With no further business to do, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Aye.